Welcome to another edition of On The Block. As we kick off a new year, it's time to take a look at what's in store for blockchain in 2019. From banking to regulation, here to give us their take in the studio today is Fiorenzo Manganiello, Professor of Blockchain Technologies at Geneva Business School, as well as Nesim Gaon, Managing Partner of Lion Group. Now, before we can even talk about 2019, let's get a review of 2018, where we saw, in fact, one of the worst years for cryptocurrencies. I mean, what are investors supposed to be thinking as we move into 2019? Sure, well, as you said, there's been a very difficult year, 2018, for cryptocurrencies, which actually I believe is very positive for investors today because there has been a consolidation in the market. So what I believe is our, uh, our view on 2019 is that there will be a consolidation in the market and institutionalization. There are basically two properties of cryptocurrency that will allow actual investors and central governments to uh, be looked at. One is the cashless society, one big trend. So that's why actually there are many central banks that I'm sure in 2019 will offer cryptocurrencies backed by national mm -hmm. currencies. And this is a huge trend. And the second thing is reaching unbankable people. So people that today do not mm -hmm. have any bank account. So I see in 2019 as a big trend, uh, national governments launching their own cryptocurrencies and a strong consolidation in the market with just focusing on the top uh, cryptocurrencies actually in the market. And Nesim, even looking beyond the crypto market, do you actually even see the blockchain space maturing? You'll see more pilots and use cases within firms? Yeah, I think big firms are really looking at, at the technology itself. Uh, we have more and more proof of concept of the technology inside big institutions. It can be in banks, it can be in insurance, it can be in consulting firm. Uh, and I think 2019 will be uh, really the year where it, it, will, be, it will allow the market uh, to be much more mainstream and to have this technology uh, more uh, in our day-to-day. -day. Because today, mm -hmm. uh, in your life or in mine, we are not using still the blockchain technology every day. Uh, but, uh, but I'm sure uh, this year, with, with the development of uh, framework and regulation, and with uh, big banks and, and big institutions working on, 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 on the technology, it will allow us to be more, more and more mainstream. I mean, financial services seems to be at the forefront when it comes to this. So which other industries do you think are going to be introducing more proof of concepts, for example? So, so if we look at, at Switzerland, for example, we have trade finance, we have uh, insurance, we have a uh, big industry that, that can really use uh, the blockchain technology uh, for, their, for their activities. Uh, today on the settlement, every middleman can be uh, kind of replaced by the technology, or at least the technology can really help them. Uh, on a day to day and, and, and we already see that that for example on the on the shipping or uh, on various industries uh, blockchain can really be an add-on and can really help uh, settlement to make to, to be easier last year right before christmas the swiss government came out with a new report outlining the legal framework surrounding distributed ledger technologies as well as blockchain from your point of view what is your assessment? Do you think that it's enough of a, of a statement, this report? Yeah, as you say, we believe that uh, it's, I personally believe it's a very good step ahead, which positions Switzerland in a very, very good regulator framework. Uh, why? Because the technology has changed very fast, so the idea of not creating new rules actually allows to be more flexible because it would be very difficult to change rules every time. So I believe that this sets Switzerland in a very good competitive position with respect to the other countries. Still, you know, it's just the first draft, so there will be still many changes to be integrated in, into that. But that's very big beginning position for Switzerland. Um, do you see any limitations with this? I, I think uh, we still need to put in place some specific laws in order to, to really uh, be in combination with the needs of the market. Uh, for example, a new project that need license from, from the FINMA uh, today takes a long time. If we, are, if we put in place very specific laws and we uh, allow us to have some, um, uh, at least first check by, by corporate that are, that are regulated by, by the FINMA, uh, that will allow us to, to make all the process faster and that will allow us as well to, to 
to put the to allow the technology to become mainstream. Okay, and, and just to jump in, the regulation of the industry right now is still within the existing realms of current financial laws. So are you trying to say that um, crypto and blockchain deserves its own set of laws? I, I think we need to, to, to take what's existing because it's working, but, uh, but we need to, to add perhaps some chapter on it to be very specific on the needs uh, of blockchain. Uh, because there is some cases that, that are very different uh, and that are uh, that need to, to be look uh, on a technological mm -hmm. point of view, and and uh, I, I think the laws are written by, by lawyers, uh, which which is good. But but sometimes uh, we need uh, we need engineer that writes for engineers. Uh, so so at some point we need uh, as well to have some some professional that give their point of view. Uh, in order to ameliorate uh, the laws in place. Now, the report actually has drawn both praise and criticism because some say that while it sets the right tone going forward, others say we shouldn't have too much regulation because that's just going to dampen innovation. So do you think that the Swiss government has struck maybe the right balance in terms yeah, of this I new report? I think we still need to consider investor protection, which is one of the key concepts uh, in this business because, you know, we have seen the market with many scam projects, so investors are actually losing a lot of money for the lack of regulation. So I think we have, as of today, the right balance between investor protection and actually uh, room, uh, uh, road for innovation. So I think that today we are in the right balance on that. So you think there's enough wiggle room or flexibility in place? Yeah, I, I, and I think it's, it's just a first draft. So, so we are mm -hmm. still, it's something that will be, uh, that will be mature over time. Uh, but, but I think it's a strong message for, for Switzerland, for the institution mm -hmm. in Switzerland, and as well for, for, for the world in general, to show that the government, it's, it's for, for innovation, for fintechs, uh, and for blockchain projects, but under a, a, a strong uh, regulatory uh, framework. Now, Switzerland is often also seen as a hub for ICO activity, but as we go into 2019, do you see this kind of dropping since more people will maybe turn to, for example, STOs or security token offerings? Yeah, so basically security token offering is giving possibility to investors, basically access to capital and liquidity. Mm. Maybe if you could give an, give an everyday example of how that could come Sure, where we can tokenize, for example, a building, a real, a real estate asset, you know, and digitalize, create a token version, and basically then investors can buy this token and actually getting a, a proportion of that building as an ownership. Is basically a, a way of liquefying, getting liquid assets. The real problem of that is that uh, still we are discussing about regulation. So, if we don't, uh, if we don't work in a, in a regulated framework, there will be many projects that actually will benefit from these mechanisms to basically put as collateral nothing or many actually many things that are not useful for investors. So there is a risk of uh, of scam again for investor. Mm -hmm because there is, this is a very new trend and many people will benefit from these trends to actually create illiquid assets and, uh, and to el elude the regulation. Yeah, if, I, if I can add something, uh, I think we, we need to be very careful of not using the security token as, for example, an activity of fund management and being under, uh, out of this regulation and being able to, to invest in whatever the... The, the project no, no, no. want to do. So, so I think we really need to be careful on that, on that uh, type of, of, uh, 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 of fundraising, but obviously that will help on the secondary market mm -hmm. of illiquid asset that will also allow uh, investors around the world to get access to some uh, illiquid as assets that they couldn't uh, afford, for example, the Swiss real estate. So do you think that it, it will overtake the level of ICO activity that we have been seeing? Yeah, absolutely. There are actually many projects are switching towards that. Mm -hmm. I still believe that uh, we need to consider what is the final benefit for in, from an investor perspective, mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, as of today, there's, there's been uh, the difference between private equity and basically, you know, STO is, is just that. STO is today unregulated, so we are trying probably to create something that already exists in an unregulated way. So that's why, again, we need to consider what is the end result for the, for the investor. And you're talking about the market infrastructure yeah. in place, right? Whether the trading of secu uh, security tokens on exchanges, um, it's still in its infancy. So 
What do you think it will take for us to get to a, a stage where we're comfortable with trading? Yeah, I think uh, basically we will need many banks to actually entering this, this market and offers, offering services and solutions toward institutional investors. Mm -hmm. we, we, we will need custodian solutions. So that's why actually we have today many banking and financial institutions trying to bridge this gap for many crypto banks starting to raise and uh, to fill this gap between banks and, uh, and traditional finance and, and cryptocurrencies. I think as well that banks will have a major role here because they will act as custodian bank for this activity uh, and they will have as well the role to, to, to check the, the underlying project, to check the, the, if the project makes sense uh, and, and really uh, be, um, be able to protect the investor. The Swiss Stock Exchange is also planning to launch their digital assets trading platform sometime in the middle, middle part of this year. I mean, how is that going to change the game? Because we're going to be able to have in, in, institutional investor mm -hmm. Uh, invest in the market. And I think that was what was missing up to, the, to, to now, uh, that all the big players, all the big uh, institutional banks, uh, all the, the pension funds uh, were either scared because of reputational risk, mm -hmm. either they, 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 they didn't have any solution to invest uh, on, on, a, on a professional way. Uh, so I think having ac actors like, like the, the six uh, looking uh, at, at this industry and, and having a regulated exchange that will, that will allow this kind of investment. And that, I think that will be uh, what's going to make the change and allows the, the technology to be much more mainstream. And we also talked about regulation earlier, but do you think that that's going to change the tone or the standpoint of banks in Switzerland, whether they're going to open up financial services to these crypto companies? Because they've been quite hesitant up till now. That's what we hope. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, banks, you know, they still need to be careful about this new asset class because traditional banks are very opposite, you know, to what is technology and DLT. Mm -hmm. So it's so a you're total quite difference. you sympathetic towards the bank's perspective. Absolutely. And, and their reservations yes. about having these crypto companies as clients. But as you mentioned, thanks to this new approach towards regulation, this is a very good step also for banks. As they can see, actually, they can feel more comfortable in working, you know, with this kind of, of assets because, you know, there is a regulation in it. And so they will be starting to implement, you know, internal team, you know, internal directives to actually understand how to work properly. I mean, this year we might be seeing um, the launch of the first crypto bank in Switzerland. Do you think that these banks um, are going to live up to, to their expectations and promises or is that going to be a new game changer in the field? Um, I, I think it's a very good point, uh, obviously. Um, uh, again, uh, I think depending on, on their activity, if it would be a retail bank or more, or more an institutional type of bank, uh, the, we, we need specialized bank in order to have the, the, the market uh, being mature and having institutional investors to get in. Um, uh, that will for sure uh, be a game changer because up to today we have only very few banks that are regulated and that are providing uh, uh, crypto services or, or uh, using the technology. Uh, but it's a process that takes some time. Uh, banks are very much regulated uh, and, and, and the regulation in place it's, has to be still modified because we saw the first framework uh, we saw the, 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 the Swiss Federal Council um, to, to jump on the question, but we are still missing some point. So it's an ongoing process. Uh, and I think big uh, uh, institutional banks are as well looking at, at the case, opening uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, crypto trading desk, and, and the main catalyst will be the custody of the assets. Now, some, you mentioned it's get about getting the big players on board. In Switzerland, some of the smaller banks have started to open up their doors to this kind of business. But I actually want to bring in a quote because we had Mario Frick, chairman of Bank Frick in Liechtenstein, on the show, and he actually sounded quite certain. My prediction is that uh, big fish, as you uh, named them, uh, will enter the market significantly second half of next year. Do you share his forecast? Yeah, actually, it's, it's already happening. Mm. So I, it's probably even, I would say, even before the Q2 of 2019, I still uh, see, you know, as you mentioned, there is a uh, few crypto banks, but it's already 
one bank in Switzerland which is, launch, which is launching an ICO. So it's the first actually ICO of a, of a real Swiss bank mm -hmm. in Switzerland. So this is a huge trend. You, you, you said know? it's already happening, but I mean, even if we walk through the doors of, say, the two biggest banks of Switzerland, it's, it's not going to be just in and out, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, because, see, because, you know, we need to consider yeah. all the elements for, for banks mm -hmm. which are totally different and less flexible than a fintech startup or whatever. Yeah. But still, it's already happening behind the door, you know, and we will see actually this happening. I totally agree with what... Uh, has been said. Yeah, I, I'm also agree. Uh, I think the the main point again, and the main challenge that we that all these big banks are facing is the custody. So um, as long as we can see a big group like Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, or uh, that are providing custody services, that will be the real game changer. And I think as soon as one have reached the 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 uh, the, the path to do it, everyone gonna follow. Uh, so so we need. A first mover, uh, a big institutional uh, banks to, 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 to do the first, the first move, and then all of them are going to follow right after. Well, it seems that it's going to be indeed a very busy year for the space in Switzerland, so we'll have to touch base later on in the second half of the year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.